I think this is a great opportunity for the president to meet with the secretary general. Uh, we're about six weeks away from a NATO summit meeting that the president will be going to. So it's a chance for him publicly to say what Secretary of State Tillerson and Mattis have said about full support for NATO. It's a chance for him to reiterate again the importance of NATO countries increasing their defense spending. And it's important to talk about necessary reform and restructuring in NATO as well, just like he talks about here domestically. Uh, he wants to see NATO do more about counterterrorism. would like to see NATO help more in Syria. would like to see uh, NATO do more on cyber. And also to reiterate that NATO's got to be strong in Europe, where Russia has been invading its neighbors like Ukraine and Georgia. Uh, Ambassador, very quickly in the space of about uh, the last week, uh, the president's potential to clash with Russia has, of course, increase. Will that uh, lead him to reassess the value of NATO, which of course in the past he's been fairly uh, critical of, and clearly NATO plays a massive role, particularly in Eastern Europe, uh, on, on sort of offsetting Russian potential aggression? I think we've already seen throughout the course of his presidency, different from the campaign, uh, that the tone and the approach toward NATO has changed. Uh, Vice President Pence led a large U.S. delegation to Munich in February. He reiterated strong support for NATO, the same from Tillerson, from Mattis, uh, from Kelly. Uh, so it is a strong U.S. support for NATO. But what they are saying is no different, really, than what other administrations have said before them. NATO allies have got to spend more on defense. Mm -hmm. They've got to pull more of their share. And NATO has to deal with modern threats and challenges, such as terrorism, not just the old uh, Soviet threat that's gone and the way that Russia is presenting challenges in NATO Europe today. Yeah, all through the campaign when the president talked about it, and then, of course, he was just a candidate, but there was all this frustration. We talk about NATO as if it's Europe, but NATO was the United States from exactly. what everybody could tell. I mean, it was all our weaponry, and, and it was their continent that Russia could roll across if they wanted to. We've got a moat. Um, so has Europe increased its spending on it, its it self-defense because of Russia or because President Trump finally said enough? It started before President Trump was elected. In 2014, uh, the NATO uh, leaders got together at a summit in Wales and reiterated for the umpteenth time that they were going to reach 2% of GDP as a target for defense spending by country. Um, they'd never done that before. They'd never reached it before, though they promised it many times. Since that time, some of them have indeed begun to increase defense spending. Uh, the Baltic states, uh, Estonia is already there, the L Lithuania and Latvia are on their way. Germany has begun to increase a bit. The UK has begun to increase. Others have not. Trump has now increased the emphasis on this. He's raised the temperature, he's raised the spotlight on this. And I think countries are starting to look at how can we actually all get on track to, to get there. Largely because they agree with what they see as a, a growing Russian challenge and threat of terrorism as well. Hey there, thanks for checking out CNBC on YouTube. Be sure to subscribe to stay up to date on all of the day's biggest stories. You can also click on any of the videos around me to watch the latest from CNBC. Thanks for watching.